Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and a wonderful, uh, blessed Christmas uh, two days in advance. And uh, we are entering into this season where we are looking forward uh, to the second coming of Yeshua. This is a season of celebrating his first advent, uh, but more importantly, it will lead to his return, not as the sacrificial lamb of God, but he will return very soon as the reigning King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So this Shabbat service, uh, I'm going to share with you the uh, Antichrist and uh, what are his characteristics. And so that we will be forewarned by scriptures as to know the person uh, who is coming, who is the Antichrist, and uh, how to uh, prepare to... Uh, his onslaught, uh, bringing on the Great Tribulation. So here, I will refer basically to the important uh, prophetic book of Daniel, particularly chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. And so let's begin. All right, so here we were told that uh, Daniel was exiled to Babylon uh, together with the people of God somewhere in uh, the time of uh, 586 BC. Now, this was a time where the Jewish people were continually disobedient to God. And uh, at last, the long suffering of uh, our Abba Father has ended, and he sent the Babylonians to chastise the Jewish nation. The Jewish people were then exiled to Babylon, and uh, the devil took advantage of this exile for 70 years to corrupt several things that is uh, of God's nature and documented in God's word. The primarily, the God's calendar was uh, distorted, and I believe by uh, more than 200 years. Now, why did I say that? This year, according to the Jewish understanding, this Jewish year is 5784. Right, 5,784 years since the creation of time and the earth. But we know that Yeshua is coming back very soon. And when Yeshua comes back, it will be the end of the 6,000 years. Because the 7,000 years uh, is the millennial period, the 7,000 years. It's a millennial period where Yeshua will return to rule and reign for a thousand years. So now, even though it's 5784, we believe that uh, Yeshua will not take uh, such a long time because if it is looking at 5784, there is still uh, more than 100 years before the year hits 6,000. And I believe that Yeshua will be returning back sooner than we think. So let's prepare for his return and looking at scripture, particularly in this Shabbat service, to know the characteristic of who the Antichrist is. Now, it is very difficult or impossible to identify the person by name, even though we know at such a time like this, the Antichrist already exists. But by knowing his characteristics, what are his the hallmark of this man? which is known as Antichrist, we will be prepared when we see him uh, exposed or revealed uh, in the world stage. Right. So here we know that uh, during the time of these 70 years of Babylonian exile, the institution of the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, was, uh, was set up. And Yeshua chastised this group of uh, religious leaders as a brood of vipers because they corrupted the word of God to a great extent and added on more onerous uh, religious traditions to the people of God. So here we were told when Daniel was praying, uh, interceding, as in Daniel 10, uh, verse 12 to 14, let me read. Then he said to me, do not fear Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your word were heard and I have come because of your word. But the prince of peace of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. And behold, 
Michael, one of the chief princes, princes came to help me, for I had been left alone and there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Now, in a nutshell, this uh, couple of verses basically tell us that uh, Angel Gabriel was refrained or was stopped for 21 days. Uh, as soon as he heard uh, Daniel's prayer, God sent Angel Gabriel to release a message to him. But he was delayed for 21 days because of the Prince of Persia. Now, the Prince of Persia is a type of uh, precursor, in fact, of Antichrist. Anyone that comes in to distort the truth or to delay the truth has that uh, personification of Antichrist. So here, this uh, verse that uh, Gabriel told to Daniel is meant for the Jewish people because they say it is to your people and in the latter days. So we know that uh, this word refers to some way in the future, uh, which we believe is coming very soon. And uh, let's move on. So here, uh, earlier on in chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He dreamt of a statue with a magnificent goal of hate. And Daniel interpreted that is the kingdom of Babylon, which Nebuchadnezzar is the king. And then from there, there is this uh, chest and, uh, and arms of silver uh, that is the next kingdom to come, which is the Medio Persia kingdom, uh, the Darius and the Akatsaxis. And then from there, it moves on to the valley uh, and, uh, and ties of bronze, uh, which is the kingdom of Alexander the Great, the Greek kingdom. And follow that with is the legs of iron. And uh, we know now uh, the legs of iron is none other than the empire of the Roman people. And then the last and the fifth kingdom uh, is makes a mixture of iron and partly of clay. Now we believe that we are in this stage where we will see the ten toes that represents the ten regions of the ten kings in the book of Revelation that will give their power to the one person who is none other than the Antichrist. So we know that there is this stone uh, that uh, is not made by the hand of man that will strike this image and the entire composite of all these various kingdoms before the end will crumble and then that will usher in the millennial period. Rule and reign. By King Yeshua. So let's move on and talk about this particular uh, prophecy by Daniel in uh, chapter 9, verse 24. And this refers to the 70 week prophecy. And let me read this verse to you 70 weeks are determined. That means there will be a total period of 70 weeks for your people, the Jewish people, and for your holy city, the city of Jerusalem to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation of iniquities, bring in an everlasting righteousness, and to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Now, this couple of uh, phrases gives you the idea that this time that Daniel refers to is the time where there will rule and reign in righteousness by King Yeshua. All right, because it says... Uh, it will be end of sin, it will finish transgressions and his reconciliation of iniquities and bring in everlasting righteousness where the king of righteousness will rule and reign. And when he says seal up the vision, it means the vision will be completed, that is seal up. Uh, and this is to anoint the most holy one, which is, of course, our Lord and our Savior, Yeshua, our King. Amen. So in a nutshell, in this uh, Daniel 9.24, it gives you the overall picture of this time spent, spent over 70 weeks before the millennia period begins. Let's move on. Now, let me explain to you 
uh, in terms of what it entails by this 70 weeks. Now, in Numbers 14.34, and there are many other verses that basically authenticate what I'm saying to you now. Let me read number 1434. According to the number of days in which you spied out the land, 40 days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely 40 years, and you shall know my rejection. Now, this is the story of uh, the um, disobedience of the Israelite when they left Egypt and wandering in the wilderness. And when they are at the entrance into the promised land, uh, Moses sent up 12 spies. And they spy the land for 40 days. But when they return, 10 of the spies give a bad report that it is impossible to go in and take the promised land because they are Anakim, they are giants in the land, and they will look like grasshoppers. But there were two faithful men, naming Joshua and Caleb. They say, no, we should go in. But being small in number, they were outspoken, out, <laughs> out talk, and uh, you know the faith of these two men did not prevail. And eventually, the nation refused to obey God's command and did not enter into the promised land. And God judged them. And God said that for every day that you spent spying on the land, 40 days, you will remain in the wilderness for 40 years. And all that generation died, except for Caleb and Joshua. So here, we know that Disobedience brings in God's wrath. And here it uh, verifies or gives us an understanding that in Scripture, a one day would be equivalent to a one year. And even also another verses it say one day could be a thousand years. So these are the clues as to how to interpret numbers uh, in the prophetic books of the Bible. So here, one day is as one year. Therefore, when we look at 70 weeks, 70 weeks consists of 7 times 70, which is equal to 490 days. And henceforth, we are talking about 490 years span. All right. So this prophecy, again, is meant for the Jewish people. It's a prophecy that relates to the holy city. And so our focus is right now on Israel and the Jewish people, and also in this uh, city, which is called Jerusalem. And here, it also refers to the end of age, like I mentioned earlier, when we talk about the finish, the transgression, the end of sin, the reconciliation for iniquity, and everlasting righteousness that will come in, the completion of the vision that is to seal up the vision and anoint the most holy one. So here in verse uh, 24, it talks about there will be a span of uh, 490 years, right? From the time that uh, uh, the next verse is going to reveal to you uh, to the time where uh, Yeshua will rule and reign and he will be called the king of righteousness. So here, I want to point out to you that there are major prophetic books, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And particularly in the Old Testament, the most important uh, book on prophecy is the book of Daniel. And in the New Testament, the most important book of prophecy <laughs> is the last book of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation. So when you want to understand uh, prophecies, you've got to look at these two books as Siamese sim, twins, right? They mirror after one another the book of Daniel in the Old Testament and the book of Revelation in the New Testament. Of course, they are supplemented by many other prophetic books like uh, Zechariah, like Dan, like uh, Daniel, for example, uh, no, like uh, uh, Isaiah, you know. Uh, so there are many other of these books that comes together to give you a complete picture of the events to come. So now let's get back to this uh, verse uh, 25 about the 70-week prophecy. Uh, now, verse 25 begins to say, Know therefore and understand that from going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again, the wall even in troublesome time. 
let me unpack to you this verse. This verse has a lot of uh, uh, information over a span of many, many years. All right, so it refers to at the starting point is the time where the commandment is issued uh, to rebuild the wall. And uh, also um, there will be troublesome time. And so we learn from uh, the book of Nehemiah that uh, uh, when Nehemiah went back to build the wall, there was in fact a lot of problem to encounter. You know, people were trying to derail his mission and giving him a lot of problems uh, when he tried to rebuild the wall. So now looking at it in schematic way, uh, we have going forth the commandment, all right? And this commandment uh, is this vertical timeline here, and there will be a span of seven weeks, all right? And thereafter that followed by 62 weeks, giving you a total 69 weeks until the Messiah, the Prince. So we know that within the 70 weeks prophecy, there are initially 69 weeks. And the 69 weeks starts from the time the commandment was issued to rebuild the streets and the wall to the time where the Messiah appears. All right. And uh, so let's go on to the next slide. Now, I just want to um, take you through to this wonderful book that I have come across. Now, this book is called The Annals of the World. It is a very voluminous book. It documents all the various dates in BC and AD of all the important biblical and secular events of history. All right, so here this is documented by this uh, very uh, well-known bishop called Bishop, uh, called bishop James uh, Usa, And uh, he has documented the dates of these key events. And when you look at particularly page 152, it documents the event when King Artaxerxes issued the commandment to Nehemiah to return to Israel, uh, particularly return to Jerusalem to rebuild the gates and the wall of Jerusalem. All right. So reading from uh, Nehemiah 2, verse 1 to 2. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, uh, where wine was before him, and I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad? Since you are not sick, this is nothing but sorrow of heart. Now Nehemiah took this uh, observation by the king with great fear. Why is he fearful? Because when the king says such a thing that uh, you're not pleasing to his sight, he could actually order your head to be chopped off by, by, by the grace of God. This king loved Nehemiah and he was concerned uh, of his demeanor. And when Nehemiah told the king that he was sorrowful because he reflected on uh, the walls of Jerusalem, uh, and they were in disrepair. And because of what he told the king, the king granted him favor. In fact, the king also gave him provisions to take him back from uh, uh, Babylon all the way back to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild the wall. So here, this is where the command was uh, issued that was referred to in uh, the earlier verse in Daniel chapter 9, uh, verse 25. And from there, it says that the year is 454 BC. And this is according to uh, documented by this Bishop James Yusa. Uh, and we know that seven weeks plus 62 weeks, as I mentioned, is a total of 49 years. And um, when we look at 49 years, um, um, and um, and 434 years, all right, which is 62 weeks. So let me repeat this. This is seven weeks, which is um, 49 years, because seven weeks is uh, seven times seven a day in a week, even 49 days, which is what 
prophetic uh, understanding of numbers equated to 49 years. And 62 weeks uh, times 7, you give you 434 years. Now, what this number means will be explained in this slide. So here, knowing therefore and understand that from going forth of the command to restore and to build Jerusalem, Daniel 9.25. So there are seven weeks, all right, uh, that took place. So in 454 4 BC, uh, if we were to add in uh, seven weeks, which is um, this uh, 49 years, it will bring you to the year 405 BC. All right. So the importance of this starting point of 405 BC is because it determined after you counted uh, 62 weeks, which is uh, 434 years, it will bring you to AD 330. All right. It brings you to AD 30. Now, what happened in AD 30? AD 30 was when the Messiah was crucified. So after 62 weeks, which is this period here, from 405 BC, it comes to 30 AD, is where the Messiah shall be cut off, meaning that was the year that Yeshua was crucified. Now, some Bible scholars mentioned that the year of crucifixion was in AD 33. Now, that is the wrong understanding because they're based on the birth of Yeshua as uh, on the starting point of BC and AD, all right? which is wrong because historically, we can docu uh, verify to you that Yeshua was not born on 0 AD, but he was born on uh, between 3rd and 4th of BC. So when you add up his 30 years, when he started his ministry and add on another three and a half years of his ministry, he was around 33 and a half years old where he was crucified. And that puts you to 30 AD. So let me go these uh, numbers in greater detail. 405 is the timeline where the seven uh, weeks have gone by on the giving of the command. And that is 405. Now, 405, you add in um, 434 years, which is equivalent to 62 weeks. 62 weeks times 7 is 434, which is 434 years. You add on to 405 BC. That will give you uh, up to this um, 29 AD. All right? It gives you up to 29 AD. But as you cross over BC and AD, the zero is actually represented by one. So you add on another year, it gives you up to 30 AD. Now, this is so incredible. And um, looking at historical information, it really proved to us that the verse given by Daniel in Daniel 24, 25, is really pointing towards that Messiah shall be cut off in the year 30 AD. As I share this with you, I get goosebumps. <laughs> and because, you know, it tells you that the word of God is yin, amen. Amen. And because of uh, our faith, we receive the word by faith, but uh, having done that, uh, history actually authenticates what is stated in the Word of God. And that adds on further to our faith to believe that what the prophecy Daniel has received from Angel Gabriel uh, will come to pass. And uh, let's move on very quickly. We mentioned that the Messiah shall be cut off. Uh, and after 62 weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off, not for himself. Of course, we know that uh, he was crucified not because he uh, was a sinful man. He was crucified because for your sin and my sin. Therefore, he says, cut off but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come. Now, this people of the prince uh, is the description of the Antichrist. And there are many Antichrists that have come and gone. But the ultimate Antichrist is still being revealed to us uh, very soon, I believe, and that will usher in 
uh, the uh, Great Tribulation that uh, I will talk about in the later slides. And then here it says, The people of Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now, this has happened before. Uh, the people of the Prince came and Jerusalem was actually destroyed twice and many more times to come. And But this verse here, it says, The end of it shall be with a flood. Now, you know that when we look at uh, prophetic words, uh, between different clauses or even different sentence structure, it could mean a big span of time has gone by. So here we know that uh, in this particular verse, people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and sanctuary had already happened many times where the Jerusalem, city of Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. But this verse here in particular is something I believe in the future. End of it. The end meaning the end of the Gentile rule and reign. Or at the end of the time before the millennial period starts. Now, why do I say that? Look at this word here. The end of it shall be with a flood. Now, you look at uh, Revelation 12, 15. All right, Revelation 12, 15 is an uh, uh, important uh, chapter of this book of Revelation that talk about the dragon, talk about the man-child, they talk about the woman, and in particularly in this verse 15, it says, So the serpent sprewed the waters out of his mouth like a flood, after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Now what this uh, verse actually says is that Satan was so enraged because he could not do anything with the man-child, which was Yeshua, he was crucified. Uh, he thought that was the end, <laughs> finito. But Yeshua rose up, he, was, he resurrected. That man-child was caught up to the throne room of God. And he was, the dragon was so angry. And after that, he went after the offspring of the women, which is the church and the believers. And uh, he spooled up his mouth like a flood right? Like a flood. Um, and you say the end of it will be like a flood. And I believe that this particular clause here refers to Daniel 12, 15, when uh, Antichrist was uh, revealed, and then he goes after the believers, uh, and he will uh, fulfill this verse. So the serpent, which is Satan, will spill water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman or and, his off, and her offspring, and that might cause her to be carried away by the flood. All right? So uh, again, uh, to really understand prophetic verses, we need to use scripture to interpret scripture. So we need to look at the scriptures uh, uh, that is uh, mentioned particularly in the book of Revelation to give you a clearer understanding of the prophecies uh, given to Daniel by the angel Gabriel. So as I mentioned earlier, the prophetic fulfillment of Antichrist comes in uh, multiple forms. It is the type and shadow. Now when we refer to the people of the prince, I basically earlier mentioned that these are the types and shadow of Antichrist that have come, and more is to come. All right, so here the first appearance, uh, you know, is in the form of uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, which is a Hellenistic, uh, a Greek Hellenistic king, whose empire eventually was destroyed by the Romans, and uh, even the Greeks as an empire had disappeared out of history, but the culture, the spirit of Greece, all right, has prevailed and uh, merged into uh, and endorsed by the Romans. All right, so here today, uh, we are actually very Hellenistic in our training and our thought uh, because we are greatly influenced uh, by the democratic process, uh, by the way education is uh, given. It is in a classroom uh, context where one teacher will then give hate knowledge, but it does not transform life and change the character of the student. All right, so it is essentially a teacher to multitude just giving you understanding of facts, all right, which is hate knowledge. But where else the Jewish people, in terms of educating their uh, offspring, they do it by lifestyle, they do it by example, they do it by apprenticeship. You know, for example, Joseph was a carpenter and henceforth Yeshua under the um, um, uh, leadership of the 
uh, 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 earthly father Joseph, he became a carpenter. All right, it's from father, the trade of a father, go down to the son through very close water, educating not just the skill, but also the spirit behind the knowledge. So there's a big difference between the Jewish way of educating their offspring, the children, and the Greek way of educating their offspring and children. All right, so here we know that um, this uh, wicked emperor actually desecrated the second temple. All right, the temple that Nehemiah has uh, uh, rebuilt in uh, 167 BC. All right, Thus, the second one is Titus, the Roman emperor, uh, who came and again destroyed uh, the second temple. And uh, this is in AD 70. Right? Of course, uh, the earlier first temple was destroyed much earlier uh, in um, this uh, BC where the Babylonians came, all right? So here, we believe the final fulfillment of uh, the Antichrist will be in the type and shadow of what had come in the past. And I believe that the characteristic of the Antichrist would have a combination of characteristics of the Greek culture with the Roman uh, governance of the Roman uh, uh, way of uh, dealing with uh, life and government. All right, so it's Greco-Roman origin. And I also believe that this Antichrist uh, will come from within, just like in the 12 disciples of Yeshua, there was one traitor, which is Judas Iscariot. In the same way, out of the 12 tribes, in the same form and pattern, there will be a tribe that where Antichrist will, or, or will emerge. And why did I say then, with possibility, this candidate? is because of the prophecy that uh, Jacob or Jacob, uh, his father, uh, gave to Dan before he went to glory. Recorded in Genesis 49, 16 to 17. Let me read. Dan shall judge his people. Judge means that rule over the people. As one of the tribes of Israel. Then shall be a serpent by the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse heel, so the rider shall fall backward. All right. That means this person will come in, that they will come and deceive, deceive the believers. All right. And uh, again, we trace it back to Genesis uh, uh, chapter 3, where uh, when uh, Eve and Adam fell, where they took uh, the fruits of uh, good and knowledge of good and evil, uh, God judged uh, Eve uh, and basically told her in Genesis 3, uh, in, in uh, saying that um, you will have pain in childbirth, uh, childbirth but most significantly, it, God uh, prophesied that the seed of the serpent will strike the heel of the seeds of the women. So here, it refers to the fact that the seed of the serpent, which is Antichrist, will come in the trap of Dan, as prophesied by Jacob, and he will bite the horse heel. But the seed of the woman will strike the head of the seed of the serpent and henceforth defeating the devil. All right, so here, with this understanding, uh, we can clearly uh, point towards that Antichrist uh, will come from within the Jewish people, and uh, specifically, uh, his origin could be traced back to the tribe of Dan. Now, this tribe of Dan is quite mysterious, like uh, one of the tribes of the Northern Kingdom. Uh, because of the Assyrians that came, they have been um, dispersed around the nations of the world. All right, and when they go to the nations of the world, they could intermarry, and uh, you know, yet uh, the spirit of the Various tribes is still within their offspring. And so, therefore, we believe that Antichrist uh, will come from one of the nations outside Israel. All right, but his origin could be traced back to the tribe of Dan. So, this is again one of the clues uh, as to who the Antichrist uh, would be. So, here, coming again to the type and shadow of Antichrist, historically, Titus. Uh, the Roman Emperor in AD uh, is one of those uh, uh, earlier uh, types of uh, Antichrist. 
and he came and destroyed Jerusalem in AD 70. Uh, the sanctuary was destroyed and henceforth desecrated. And I believe that more of this Antichrist will arise. All right. Even though now we look at it, you know, we have people who say that uh, Hitler could be a form of Antichrist. And uh, recently they were talking about even uh, Obama, you know, could be uh, Antichrist. But all these have come and gone. Right. So we do not want to do all this guesswork, all right? because our guessing uh, will always uh, end up in fertility. But when the Antichrist appears, we will know. How do we know? Because we rely on the prophetic verses found in the Bible. So here, verse 27 of Daniel 9. Then he shall confirm one, a covenant with many for one week, all right? One week, again, we know is seven days and it could be a period of seven years. Uh, but in two, in the middle of the week, which is the uh, middle of the seven years, which is three and a half years, or 1,260 days, or 42 months, or time and time and half a time. Now, all these are mentioned in the book of Revelation, but they all point towards this time span of three and a half years. He shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall he be one who make desolate. And three, even the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Now, why do I number this one, two, and three? Because I'm going to particularly delve deeper into these three areas, these three points in the later slides. Point number one is to confirm a covenant. Now, what is this covenant? We know that in scripture, there are 315 mentions of covenant, all right, out of which 282 uh, specifically mentioned in the Old Testaments. And in the New Testaments, there are 33 mentions. So which covenant are we uh, referring to in this uh, verse 27 of Daniel chapter 9? We know that this prophecy was given by, uh, to Daniel by Gabriel, and it is meant uh, for the Jewish people, right? Because it says that it's your people, not the people of the world, all right? So the Gentiles are not included in this specific reference. The covenant can be traced or should be traced back to Abraham. And uh, what are the major Abrahamic covenant? I think the central theme of it, of many other uh, covenant that God had made with Abraham, the central theme of it is refers to the worship of Yahweh, which is the temple worship. So I believe that when the Antichrist comes and to confirm a covenant with many, I believe that this covenant it relates to the temple worship, and with the temple worship, we would have to have a temple. So I, I believe that uh, what we are currently seeing in the Gaza war is not something that is unplanned in the will of God, all right? It was there to usher in on a prelude to this confirmation of the covenant mentioned in Daniel uh, 9, 27, all right? So here, uh, it is refers to their right to worship in Temple Mount, and uh, there is now a uh, debate in the United Nations as to how to resolve this um, war that is currently engaged in Gaza where many innocent lives are at stake, uh, both on the side of the Gazans and also the side of the Jewish people. At the moment, it's, uh, more than 150 soldiers, IDF soldiers have fallen. Right? So it's a high price for the Jewish people to pay and also a greater price for the Gazans, particularly the innocent civilians. Uh, that are now left with no proper adequate water and food supply and medicine. And people are suffering. And uh, United Nations is uh, debating on how to bring this um, war to a conclusion. And I believe that part of this uh, resolution will uh, allude to uh, giving the right of uh, the Jewish people to worship on Temple Mount and uh, to build their third temple. Now, the third temple, and why is it that a physical temple is needed? Now, there are many well-intended uh, intentioned uh, scholars, Bible scholars, 
uh, that say and correctly say so, that uh, we do not need to have a physical temper. Because according to scripture, particularly in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and there are many other similar verses, uh, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is absolutely correct. But no way, no, no, other than that, it is our temple is the, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is the reason why we need to keep our body healthy. Because we want to make our body uh, a glorious uh, temper uh, for hosting the presence of the Holy Spirit. All right, so here, why is then that a physical temple is needed? I believe that this is the heartbeat of the Father. The heartbeat of the Father is that none shall be lost, particularly his firstborn, the nation of Israel. And so by his grace, he will come and revisit his people one more time. His Shekinah glory, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will one more time come and to visit his people so that their eyes of understanding will be enlightened. And they will come and say, Yeshua, you are our Hamashiach. And plead allegiance to Yeshua and accept his sacrificial blood for their salvation. And I believe that a physical temple is needed because if you look at Ezekiel 43, verse 1 to 7, it talks about a physical temple. And the physical temple dimensions were given in the earlier chapter, Ezekiel 42, particularly uh, verse um, 20. And it talks about that there will be a temple and there will be a wall surrounding the temple that uh, divides the profane area from the holy area. But let me make sure that I'm saying what I should be saying. Turning with me to Ezekiel 42 and uh, reading from verse 20. It says, He measured it out on the floor side. All right, this is Ezekiel 42, verse 20. And it had a wall around 500 cubit long, 500 wide, to separate the holy area from the profane, right, from the common. So here we understand that when the temple is built on Temple Mount, there remain a structure called the Doom of the Rock. And if you happen to be able to go into the Doom of the Rock, on the parameter, it is written down there that God has no son. Yeshua is a good man, he's a prophet, but he's not the son of God. And in the book of John, it says that for those who deny Yeshua as the son of God, has the spirit of Antichrist. So here we know from this scripture and from this declaration within the parameters in the Doom of the Rock, we know that that is an abomination and that is an unholy uh, 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 building. And that's why in Ezekiel 42, verse 20, it says that the temple, the Ezekiel temple, the temple that Ezekiel saw on Temple Mount has a wall that separate the holy place from the profane. So here, we believe that in God's grace and His mercy, his Shekinah glory is going to be manifested in the third temple that will be built and has to be built for God to reveal himself and his Shekinah glory to fill the temple. All right, so that there will be a remnant of Jewish people who acknowledge that Yeshua is their Hamashiach. So here, I want to bring you back to... Uh, God's pattern huh, of what has happened in the past is a indication in the pattern form of what is going to happen in the future. Before AD 70, the destruction of uh, the temple by the Roman uh, legions, or right, the Roman army, uh, Prince Titus, before he became emperor, was given a command by his father to siege Jerusalem and to conquer Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was besieged by the Roman uh, army. But after a while, Prince Titus needed to rush back to Rome 
because his father was dying and he wanted to ensure that he would be the next emperor. So he rushed back to Rome and therefore the siege was removed. And those people who were in the Jerusalem within the wall, remember what Yeshua said. Okay, Yeshua said that every stone here will be not will be overturned uh, and the temple will be destroyed. And because they understood that, so those who have understanding, all right, those eyes were, were enlightened. They have took this opportunity where the Roman army went back to Rome and the siege was released. They left and fled Jerusalem. Many of them went to Petra and many other areas of refuge and they were kept safe. When Emperor Titus now returned back as Emperor of Rome in AD 70, all those people that did not flee from Jerusalem while the time was available, they were all killed. So in the same way, I believe that when the Shekinah glory comes onto the third temple on Temple Mount, many Jewish people's eyes will be enlightened to see the Shekinah glory of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And then they will bow down and they will cry out, you know, Baruch haba Bashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they will flee from Jerusalem before Antichrist entered into the temple and desecrated. So here, again, why I'm so confident that there will be a third temple? Because it was written by John the Apostle. John was taken up by the Spirit. And uh, in John 11, 1, let me read. Then I was given a reed. John was given a reed, like a measuring rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God. See? Temple of God. John saw with his physical eyes. There is a temple. A temple of God, not a temple of Satan. A temple of God and those who worship there. And so without a shadow of doubt, I know that there will be a third temple. Of course, many... Um, well intended the Bible scholars, they say that we do not need a temple because our body is the temple of God, which is absolutely correct. But they miss this important point that God in his mercy and in his grace, he will appear to the Jewish people one last time to give them the opportunity to flee as they fled before AD 70. And these people will flee before the onslaught comes in the form of the Great Tribulation. So the temple will be built. I'm very certain about that. And why am I so certain? Because I visited the Temple Institute and I know for sure the Jewish heart is that they want this temple. And this is the will of the Father, not the will of man. If it's the will of the Father, you cannot stop it. Even though you may say that I do not want to support the building of the temple, it does not matter. God's will will be done. So I went and take, uh, took groups to this uh, visit to Temple Institute, and there you see all the various preparation down to the priesthood gowns, bound into the article of worship, and the blueprint of the construction of the temple according to the dimension of the first temple. Not the second temple that Herod had uh, enlarged, but the first temple that King Solomon built. And that temple can easily be located within the space in current Temple Mount. So here we also know that uh, the Red Hypha is already ready. There are five already in the land. One has proven not to be uh, pure in terms of uh, the colorization of the fur, but there's still four more left. And if any one of these Red Hypha is deemed to be without blemished, that means not a single fur that is of a different color, then the sacrifice of the Red Hypha will take place. And that particular site in Mount of Olive, that has to be that particular site with the line of sight through the sacrificial site, right into the Golden Gate or the Eastern Gate, right into the Holy of Holies, a line of sight. And that particular site on Mount of Olive that was not available for sale for hundreds of years was recently purchased by the Jewish authority. So here, the heart of the people wants a temple. 
the Temple Institute with all the various preparation done to the point of even anointing and teaching the priesthood and the Sanhedrin. The Red Haifa has been uh, breed and now in Israel. And now they just need to have this covenant as mentioned in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, to be confirmed. So here, God's glory will appear. And um, in Revelation 12, 13 to 14. Now the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth. He persecuted the women who gave birth to the male child. Now this male child uh, is um, Yeshua. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. And I believe this will be the exodus, you know, by airplanes. And that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where it is nourished for a time, times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Now remember what I mentioned to you about time, times and half a time. As again, it refers to 42 months, 1,260 days or three and a half years. And I believe that this is the period where the women will be given two wings of a great eagle and they will be brought to the place of refuge and will be kept safe from the serpent during the three and a half years or the latter part of the seven years of tribulation, which is known also as the three and a half years, the wrath of the dragon or the great tribulation. So who is Antichrist? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you who is the person by name. All right, but that is not important because the day where he is revealed, all of us know, but we need to know a big step of what to do and how to prepare before he is revealed. And it's a certainty that he will be revealed. As to the timing, nobody knows. I feel that it's going to be very close. I could be wrong and I pray that I am wrong so that we will have more time to prepare. So here, uh, repeating again on verse 26 of Daniel 9, after 62 weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off. That means uh, the death of Yeshua, the crucifixion of our Lord, but not for himself and the people of things who is to come, which is the Antichrist, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it will be like a flood. I told you that refers to Revelation 12. You know, the serpent will, you know, spill out the water uh, to run after the uh, uh, offspring of uh, the women, which is actually referring to the Jewish people the offspring of the Jewish people. All right, until the end of the war, desolation are determined. All right, so here, the scripture says, uh, Antichrist uh, is an imitator of God. Now, Satan has no originality. When he tested Yeshua in the 40 days when Yeshua was in the wilderness, there's only three ploy that he tested Yeshua. And these are the same devices or same trick that he used on all of us. It is the lust of the flesh. All right. When we are hungry, like Yeshua was hungry, he showed him, turn the stone into bread. All right. Or the lust of our eyes. To look at the glory. He brought Yeshua to a um, high mountain and showed him the glory of the kingdom, his kingdom, his evil kingdom. All right. The lust of the eyes. And then lastly, the bright of life. He said, if you are the son of God, Boast it, show it to me, jump down. And even quoted scripture from Psalm 91, that God will send his holy angels and to ensure that the foot of Yeshua will not strike a rock. See, the devil can quote scriptures better than all of us. So the devil is no originality. What he's done in the past, he will continue to do it. So he will want to imitate whatever God has done. So God, we know, as a triunion God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Henceforth, the devil also have the dragon, all right? And there's an antichrist and there's also the false prophet. All right, there's a dragon, the beast from the earth and the beast of the sea, as in Revelation uh, chapter 13. And Yeshua had the ministry for three and a half years where he mentored or disciple 12, he lost one and then replaced by Paul the Apostle. And then during that three and a half years, the Apostles, after being trained and mentored for three and a half years, went out to the world and to bring the gospel of the kingdom to every one of us. Devil will be given the same chance. God is fair. And as what is given this 
three and a half years too, to persecute God's people using his agent of, uh, of, of, of death, all right, namely Antichrist and the false prophets. So we know that this last half of the seven years, which is the three and a half years, is also known as the Great Tribulation. Now, John 17, 12, let me read. Satan sent his son, the son of perdition, right? But while I was with him in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition. Now, we know that when Yeshua came, the devil knows it. So he actually sent his son, the son of perdition, which has entered in the spirit of his, his, uh, this um, Judas Iscariot. Right? So Judas Iscariot became the son of perdition. And uh, he was a spy. In fact, he was, he was mentored and journeyed with uh, Yeshua at close quarters. So what he has seen, he would have reported to the devil. And therefore, uh, in the same way, all right, in the same way, there will be a sign of perdition that comes in the near future. So Yeshua is coming back, and the son of Satan, the son of perdition, is coming too. And this son of perdition will to all of us will be known as the Antichrist. So in Second Thessalonians, he say, Let us let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come until the falling away comes first. And now we are seeing many, many signs of the falling away. Great apostasies. You know, we have church that actually worship the devil. We have church that diluted, uh, adult, uh, adulterated the word of God. You know, doing all kinds of evil. You know, allowing homosexuality to be practiced in the church. All these are the falling away that is mentioned. All right, the falling away. The man of sin is revealed. The son of perdition. Right? So here it tells you, without a shadow of doubt, the son of perdition will reappear. All right? And this son of perdition is none other than the Antichrist. And further down in uh, verse 9 to 10, the coming of the lawless ones is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So we should not be deceived by just watching wonders and, and, and signs, all right? We must always check it. Is this what God says? And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perished because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So many people had each years right, in the last days. And even though they could have been accepted Yeshua as their savior, but because of the each years, they will be deceived. And many will, lost their, will lose their faith. All right? Many of them will deny Yeshua. And I pray that every one of you who are listening in this uh, Shabbat service and uh, over Zoom and over YouTube channel will understand that we need to keep faith. We need to remain faithful. And the only way that we can overcome the evil one and be the overcomer is by the blood of the Lamb, by our word of testimony, and eventually loving not a life unto death. So again, in the middle of the week, uh, the Antichrist will confirm this covenant and then he will begin to bring an end to the sacrifice. So we know that when the third temple is built, they will resume to, uh, the uh, sacrifices. All right. And um, until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out onto the desolate. All right. So here, Antichrist will declare himself as God to be worshipped in the middle of the seven years. All right? And um, he will stop the animal sacrifices and the international animal rights group will be so happy because they are saying that why there are so many animals that are sacrificed and when the sacrifice takes place, there will be blood that flow out in great quantity because many bulls and uh, Animals like lamb and goats and cows uh, uh, will be sacrificed continuously. Right? So here, Antichrist will be supported by those uh, animal rights group lovers. Uh, and uh, he will come with high moral ground. 
to stop the sacrifice and then he will declare himself as God and he will demand worship. So on the wing of abomination shall one who makes desolate. Now he will begin to reveal himself and on this wing of abomination, he will begin to make a, 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 a persecution of the body of Christ. All right, they will hunt down the believers, and uh, that's when the third uh, three and a half years of great tribulation will start, or it is known as the wrath of the dragon. And uh, this is the wing of abomination, and Antichrist is the person that will cause this desolation to those who are saved. The desolation means uh, the great persecution that will find many, many martyrs. And in Revelation, the chapter. Uh, Six, it talks about in the in the in the fifth uh, opening of the fifth seal, the uh, the martyrs are crying out, and the Lord says, "He will come and avenge for them, for the injustice that has been done to them, when the number of martyrs have been fulfilled." All right. So who is this desolate? Is none other than the Antichrist. All right, and. Um, the beast was captured, mentioned in 1920, and with him the false prophet and those book signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two are, were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. So when this verse talk about uh, that uh, this person who caused the desolation, all right, uh, until the consummation which is determined, Fall out on the desolate. This desolate will be the end of the Antichrist. He will be thrown together with the false prophet into the lake of fire before the millennial period starts. So the consummation, I want to say that the consummation is actually uh, the uh, time where the end of the great tribulation and uh, in the sounding of the seventh trumpet in Revelation 15. Let me read. Then I saw another angel in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels be having seven last plagues. Now these seven angels are from heaven. They are the one that has uh, the seven bowl of the wrath of God. And this is a very short period known as the wrath of God. All right. And um, God, in, the, in scripture, he mentioned that Unless God shortened this period, no flesh will survive. But God in his ultimate mercy, he will shorten this wrath of God such that there will still be a remnant of people, nations, tongues and tribes that have not received Yeshua as their personal saviour. They will still be alive and they will then move into the millennial period and they will still be given a chance in Revelation uh, talking about uh, uh, the, the letter to the uh, Church of Laodicea in Revelation 3.20, Yeshua will still knock at the door of the heart and if they invite Yeshua in, they will be saved. All right, so here uh, in Revelation 15, it talks about uh, the Song of Moses, which is a celebratory song of victory when Moses uh, conquered uh, the army of uh, 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 Pharaoh with the help of God. All right, so again, this um, Song of Moses will be sung you know, on this timing, All right? And then here, the temple of the tabernacle in heaven will be open, all right? And this period, uh, you know, will be filled with smoke and the glory, and then no one can enter. Now, this is, uh, again, related to the ancient uh, way of temple worship. There will be seven blasts of the shofar. The first blast is where the temple is open when the sun breaks, late, the new dawn day. And then after that, followed by, uh, you know, three blasts of uh, shofar, showing the closure of the first uh, morning service, uh, morning worship, and then followed by another two more blasts, and that will end the uh, second uh, evening worship, and then the door of the temple will be closed with the last blast of the shofar, which is the seventh shofar. So, to end, I just want to recap that uh, the key point in the Daniel prophecies is 
basically focus on the time before Yeshua returns. And this is the time where I believe that the temple will be built, the third temple, and Antichrist will come into the temple uh, to desecrate it. And uh, this covenant that facilitated the building of the temple has the Antichrist hand all over it. All right, he's instrumental in uh, confirming this covenant. And in the middle of that, he will uh, show his face and demand worship. And then uh, it will bring forth the great tribulation and the uh, Antichrist and the false prophet. Uh, when the end of the tribulation period will be thrown into the lake of fire, and they are the desolates. All right. And just to make it absolutely clear, I want to show you the timeline. Uh, this is the time of confirming the covenant, all right? And uh, that will facilitate the starting of the building of the third temple. And when the temple is built, uh, there will be temple uh, sacrifices or animals. And in the middle of these seven years, uh, you know, the uh, Antichrist will be revealed. But before the re revelation of the Antichrist, God's Shekinah glory will come into the third temple and many Jewish people will be saved because their eyes will be open to recognize that Yeshua is the Hamashiach and accept the atoning blood that he shed on Calvary. So in the middle of the seven years, uh, the Antichrist again uh, mentioned that will be revealed and uh, he was commence the persecution of the saints and this is known as the era of the wrath of the dragon or the great tribulation that lasts three and a half years and immediately after that before the wrath of God comes in I believe the church or the body uh, will be taken up into heavens all right the dead in Christ will rise up first and those who are still alive will rise up and meet the Lord in the air and then the bride will then uh, celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. And they will have seven years of bliss in heaven with Yeshua. Uh, the wrath of God will be very, very short. And then there will be seven years of cleaning up by those who are left behind. And at the end of the seven years and the celebration of the marriage supper of the Lamb that lasts seven years, Yeshua and the bride and the new Jerusalem will descend. And that will start the millennial period. So with that, uh, thank you for your uh, attention and uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift out his covenants upon you and give you shalom and have a blessed Christmas day to come. A day of celebrating not just his birth, but celebrating his first coming in the mighty name of Yeshua. Shalom and goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe by pressing this button below you'll be the first to be informed of any posting that I make. Shalom, goodbye.